This is a video on phrase structure grammars. I'm Chandra Shripada. Look at this sentence. Col colorless green ideas sleep furiously. This was famously put forward by the linguist Noam Chomsky. And what he pointed out is that it follows the rules of English. As linguists would say, it's syntactically well-formed, but it's semantically just nonsensical. But what is this idea of something, some sentence being syntactically well-formed? That's where grammars come in. There are a set of rules that generate the valid sentences in a language. And today's topic is phrase structure grammars. There are a particular kind of grammar that have been highly influential in linguistics. Um, the emphasis in these grammars is on hierarchical constituent structure, and they were popularized by Noam Chomsky. Here is a simple um, phrase structure grammar. Its rules are here and its lexicon is here. This grammar can be used to generate new sentences or parse and display the syntactic structure of existing sentences. The best way to get a feel for phrase structure grammars is to actually use them. So let me use this one to generate a new sentence. The first thing I do is I start with this rule labeled with S on the left. That means sentence. And what this says is that a sentence has two constituents, NP and VP for noun phrase and verb phrase. Look at noun phrase. <clears throat> it too has two constituents, determiner and noun. Um, determiner and noun are elements, uh, are uh, names for elements uh, in the lexicon. So at this point, I have a choice. I can select my determiner and my noun. There's only one determiner, the, but the noun I'll choose cat. Now look at verb phrase. It has two constituents, according to this rule, verb and noun phrase. And uh, at this point I have a choice and I choose that my verb will be hit and I choose that uh, I now apply this rule, noun, noun phrase becomes determiner and noun and I choose for my determiner V, and the noun I choose as mouse. So this is a valid sentence in the language because I followed the rules, and wherever I had options, I used elements of the lexicon. And my sentence is, the cat hit the mouse. Let me summarize some points about how you use phrase structure grammars to generate a new sentence. Always start with the rule with an S on the left. That's your starting point. You keep on decomposing uh, constituents further, and you stop only when the only thing left is elements of the lexicon, which essentially are terminal nodes and can't be decomposed any further. You can see that the phrase structure rules um, exhibit some interesting features. First, they're hierarchical. The sentence is broken down into abstract constituents, which are in turn broken down into further constituents. Also, you can see from the rules that they are combinatoric. What that means is that the rules are defined over elements that can be recombined in open-ended ways. So I formed the sentence, the cat hit the mouse. I could have formed a number of other sentences, such as the monkey hugged the man. Um, there are many sentences that, uh, with these rules, these elements uh, can be recombined to produce a number of different sentences. The other thing that you can do with phrase structure grammars is parse an existing sentence to display its syntactic structure. Let me illustrate how that's done. Here's my sentence, the dog hugged the mouse. My first step is to label these um, words with the um, categories from the lexicon to which the words belong. Um, so I've done that here. The next step is to apply rules that group um, these categories into high order categories so that determiner and noun is grouped into noun phrase and this determiner and noun is grouped into a noun phrase. The next thing I can do is group the verb and this noun phrase into a verb phrase and because I have a noun phrase and a verb phrase I know I can group those into the sentence. Um, I stop there and here are some pointers for how you um, parse an existing sentence. You always start by assigning each word of the sentence a category using the lexicon, and you stop when you've assigned categories to sentence 
and S is the top level node and all other nodes are children of it. That's the stopping point. I now want to turn to the topic of recursive phrase structure rules. Here is a new set of rules and here is a new lexicon. The rules aren't entirely new. The first three rules are the same ones we had before. It's these three at the bottom that are the new rules. Let me start with a sentence that's similar to the ones that we had before. The sentence is, the frog likes the alligator. I'm going to parse this to display its syntactic structure. We already know how to do that. I start by assigning each word to the category that it belongs to from the lexicon. I group the determiner noun into noun phrase, this one, this pair into a noun phrase. I get a verb phrase here, and as you know, a noun phrase and a verb phrase are constituents of sentence. Um, that's what we did before, but look what I can do with these new rules. I can add to this sentence. I now add the words, the mouse hates that the frog likes the alligator. Um, so the meaning of that is something like, you know, maybe this mouse is jealous because the frog likes the alligator. Maybe the mouse used to date the frog. Something like that. Frankly, I'm with the mouse here. I think the frog is probably in a pretty problematic relationship with this alligator. In any case, let's, let's push on. Um, previously, sentence was the top level node, but here I take the that clause and the sentence, and they are constituents of the complementizer phrase. That's what the CP stands for. And then the CP itself is a constituent of a verb phrase. Now, the, this determiner and noun are part of a noun phrase, and as always, a noun phrase and a verb phrase get together to form a sentence. This is my stopping point because this sentence um, sits as the top level node and everything else is a child of it. So you see that I was able to use these rules to add to an existing sentence. And it seems like that process could be iterated. It could go on again and again, and I could keep producing longer sentences. That's the idea behind recursive rules. Let me illustrate the idea of recursion from another perspective. These were our first rules. And you can see what these rules do. The sentence decomposes into noun phrase and verb phrase. The noun phrase, its constituents are noun and determiner, and then you just get elements of the lexicon. The verb phrase, it does go to another constituent, it's fairly abstract, noun phrase, but noun phrase again flows into noun and determiner, which decomposes into elements of the lexicon. The verb phrase also has a verb in it, which decomposes into elements of the lexicon. So the entirety of the flow is always from the left direction over to the right and never backwards. What happens with these new rules that involve the complementizer phrases is you get a cycle going so that noun phrase and verb phrase now go into noun complementizer or verb complementizer. And the complementizer phrase is that s. And that s takes us back to the starting node, s. And that's the sense in which a cycle is generated. And you can flow down this cycle again and again, producing longer and longer words. I, I'm sorry, longer and longer sentences. To sum up, phrase structure grammars are a particular kind of grammar that have been highly influential in linguistics. And recall that grammars themselves are an attempt to capture this idea of syntactic well-formedness that's different than the meaning, the semantic meaningfulness of a sentence. The phrase structure grammars that we looked at today are hierarchical with their emphasis on constituent structure. They're combinatoric. Um, elements are reused to produce a variety of different sentences. And at least some of them are, uh, of these grammars are recursive, uh, allowing for uh, sentences of potentially unbounded length. Thank you very much. I hope that was fun and illuminating and thank you for listening.